Hi guys, this week I want to talk about the five myths associated with S1000D. Okay, I think we're ready. Hi, and welcome to this week's short tutorial on YouTube from TDW. And I'm going to talk about the five myths associated with S1000D. Now, these are things that have come about and are used as sales tactics or are used as USPs for S1000D when in fact it's not entirely true. Now this came around because this week I had a conversation with a customer who said that he is being told he must use S1000D because it's going to deliver all of these great benefits. Now what's really important S1000D and other similar specifications, when used correctly and appropriately, could be a great fit for your organization. But don't fall into the sales spiel of these five tips. Now, what we've done is I'm going to go through them here very briefly on YouTube. But over on our main channel, over on our website, I've added a little bit more information. So just to entice you to go over and create an account on our website, go on over and you can watch the full tutorial for free on why I believe these are five myths. So what do I believe are the five myths associated with S1000D? Well, the first one is S1000D saves you money. Guess what, guys? Nobody anywhere has said how much money it has actually saved them. And on our S1000D cost curve tutorial, we talk about why S1000D in the early days is actually going to cost you more. It's not going to cost you less, but over a lifetime of a product, it can and should save you money. But we go into more detail over on our course. One of the biggest myths around S1000D is data reuse. And again, over on our channel, over on our website, we go through why that is a myth. Because S1000D is concerned about a project. So project data reuse is very good. But why is it that something like DITA is getting more and more attention? Why? Because DITA can fit into an organization and it can embrace and encompass data from marketing, from sales, from customer support, and you, you fill in the gaps where S1000D by design focuses on a product project or a platform. So that is myth number two. Myth number three, don't fall into this one. S1000D is scalable. Oh no, it's not guys, not easily. When we talk about the cost curve on our YouTube, uh, sorry, not on our YouTube, on our TDIQ course, we talk about all of the upfront effort that's required with an S1000D project necessary, especially if you're going to get it right. And if you want to use it well in your organization, all of that upfront work is necessary. But if I'm documenting a ship, that is absolutely something we need to go through. But if I'm documenting this table, that it's a small platform, do I really want to go through that entire effort of DMRL and all of these things? Probably not. Of course, there's lots of other factors that you would need to consider if S1000D was good or bad for your organization in the same way that you need to consider whether DITA is good or bad for your organization. Myth number four is software and skills are widely available. Now, one of the biggest challenges in the market today is finding the right skills and the right software for your 
project for your organization. And what we're seeing more and more now is somebody who might be a really good technical author who really understands S1000D and really fits in really well to your organization is often enticed away by slightly more money, slightly more benefits, maybe closer to their own home or something along those lines, because these skills are hard to find in the market. And it, they, so when embarking on an S1000D strategy or an S1000D project, you need to be sure that you can skill it, you can resource it, and you can retain those resources. And software is not widely available. Now, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at the five tips when identifying a tech data solution. But to give you an idea is that many years ago, the S1000D market was maybe one or two suppliers. Then it kind of expanded where there was more suppliers. And over the last few years, it's kind of contracted naturally through acquisition or products being retired or all of those things. So the software is now becoming supported by fewer and fewer organizations. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that when there's only specialist companies in the market, the price goes up. So rightly so. And we talk about that, I think, in the uh, previous issue of the magazine, why software costs in our market so much more and how you can reduce those costs. But software and skills are not widely available. You can certainly pick up, you could probably look at about four or five different CSDBs and all of them work slightly differently, but fundamentally they're the same. And uh, you just need to pick the ones that are, are good for your organization. This one is my, my kind of bellyache and a hundred percent I disagree with this is that S1000D is supposed to be interoperable. Now what we mean by that is you can have interoperability at a couple of different levels. You can have interoperability with other specifications and standards which is something that ASD as a community is looking at right now you know with the introduction of all these other new um, specifications that are coming round, and we're doing a tutorial in the next couple of weeks on all of these specifications and how they're going to fit in and how they're going to affect your organization. But that's one level of interoperability. Another level of interoperability is that supplier A might be using uh, vendor one's product and supplier B might be using vendor two's product. Now, in theory, I should be able to take my data from that system and walk over to this system and drop it in. That's never, ever the case. And there's always some kind of jiggery pokery that needs to be done. Yes, S1000D says that, you know, it's an open specification that through a DDN, you should be able to package everything and send it off to somebody and it should suck it in and should work. Unfortunately, you see it now more and more in business rules and those kind of things where you are asking for data to be packaged in a certain way so it can accommodate certain software nuances. And I won't go into any of the specifics here, but over on the more elongated uh, tutorial, we will. And we'll give some examples of where that happens. But simple things that is standard for how software work actually gets in the way of interoperability and being able to exchange data very, very quickly on an S1000D project. So those are my five myths. And like I say, over on our TDW channel on our website, go over, create an account. We're going to add a little bit more meat to these five myths so you can understand. We're going to talk a little bit about why S1000D is seen more like the bull in the china shop and Ditter is seen more as the kind of pussycat that everyone really wants to give a little hug to. And we talk about why, you know, the uh, the uh, environments for both of those specifications are completely different. But we talk about that. So go on over, create an account on our website. In the next issue of our magazine, obviously Q1 has already gone out and everyone should have that by now. If you haven't got it, you can order a copy on our website. 
In the next issue, we're going to talk about some more of the myths associated with S1000D. And just remember that using S1000D can be very powerful and it can deliver many, many benefits. But don't be sucked into these are the five main benefits because they are absolutely wrong. They are absolutely. And this is why we have our mythical character here. Those of you who are familiar with the sword and the stone, that's what we have here. It's a myth. The reality is, is that this is spiel that now floats around the specification that has been invented by sales guys over the years that are trying to convince organizations that these are the reasons why you want to use S1000D. And you have to remember that S1000D was not designed for lots of these things that I talked about. The genesis of S1000D is much, much more different. And we talk about that on our S1000D introductory course over on TDIQ, where it came from and why. So I hope you found this a little bit more interesting. We are, we keep promising it. We're going to do it today. We've got a break in the weather. We're going to head on over to Tangmere Military Aviation Museum, who have kindly agreed for us to do a tutorial on their premises on data obsolescence and they are going to lend us some we believe some second world war manuals for use in these tutorials so we're hoping to head out there this afternoon my name is michael ingledew i hope you found this interesting if you did please subscribe below i know the majority of you are actually watching these through our website as opposed to youtube because um, youtube is blocked in your organization so we will continue to embed these videos on our website until data obsolescence. Thanks very much.